what the steps are on a purchase. Uh, you know, smart brokers who create that kind of content that is hyper local because you know you can find a video from somebody in Utah, but their whole process, their laws are very different. So hyper local content about local uh, best practices, local processes, that's crucial. I want to ask you, Phil, regarding <coughs> communities. How about drones? I mean, I know that uh, there's an issue regarding the licensing or many of the professional. I heard of one that just uh, went on fire into a building in Long Island recently. Have you it's come not across good. fires? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, going to cause a bad. claim. Yeah. Maybe in the clue report that will be found. Right. Uh, if you have a clue, that is. Yes. Uh, what about drones? Have you heard of as a has our board kind of talked about use of drones? It's kind of the flavor of the month a year or two ago, and you know, for those not understanding, drone is is like a little camera that flies on a like a like a toy oh, helicopter okay. that can take aerial photos or aerial videos. And um, there's privacy concerns with it, and there's also compliance concerns from municipalities that don't like them. They, they don't want um, brokers to use them. Uh, I would just say check your local statutes to make sure it's, it's viable, if, if it's allowed. And um, if it's not, <coughs> don't do it. And if it is, go for it. These are not the drones that you're looking for. These are not the drones that uh, are you used. Did that just just so you can throw that no, in there, I didn't that, you? <laughs> All right. How about social media? Social media has definitely changed the way we do business. It's crazy. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. So it's it's very close to magic. So the the companies that do um, social media have collected so much data over the past ten years that they can predict the web habits of people that are going to move. So they know what predictive behavior is. Mm -hmm. So if we want to advertise a property. We can go, we can create an ad campaign for a specific listing for the demographic socioeconomic group that is most likely to buy that property, geographically centered. So we can, for example, for a home in southern Westchester, we can advertise it in the social media of people, in the Facebook feed of people that, for example, live uh, south in the Bronx or Manhattan in the boroughs of a certain income with certain uh, web habits. And it's crazy. It, it is the most amazing thing. Very interesting stuff. And it blows people's minds. Now, this is the same phenomenon where if you're looking at a handbag on Amazon.com, yep. you open up your Gmail and that handbag is in the margin. Or even on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a similar yeah. thing, but the stakes are much higher because it's applied to real estate. Right. So what are you seeing now? What, what's happening with that? Okay, are people so afraid of this? Are they embracing it? Or how are you The younger it? they are, the less afraid they are. Okay. okay? Uh, the concept of privacy among baby boomers it no longer exists. Uh, the concept of privacy um, uh, that baby boomers expected in years past no okay. longer exists. Well, the older boomers are very nervous about it. Yeah, it's, it's unsettling that websites know that you just looked at something on eBay. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, millennials don't even notice it. So there's also community pages. There's also stuff, uh, you know, 360 things to do in, you know, uh, wherever New York. Uh, that's popular. But uh, the idea of privacy and the idea of the web pages knowing what you're looking at and tailoring ads to fit your specific demographic, it's, it's, it's what is here and now. Okay. So for the last part of this show, I, we talked about consumers finding out information on the Internet and they're looking and they don't want to be bothered, they don't want anyone bothering them, they mm -hmm. want to look on their own, and then when they find something very similar to when I'm in a, in a mall and I'm looking for a dress, mm -hmm. if the salesperson comes up to me and says, can I help you, I tell them, no, I'm just looking, no, I'm just looking, and then when I find something, I want, where is that salesperson? Right, Melissa, I know you're, you're definitely nodding there. Uh, that's when I want that person. Now, as a consumer, the biggest myth that we talked about earlier is when I want that person to help me, I'm going to click in and get the listing agent because I can get a better deal. Why is this a myth and what is the danger with that? Okay, so um, the listing agent works for the seller. So the myth goes like this. If I go directly to the listing agent, because they'll make more commission dealing with me with no buyer's agent, that they'll work harder to get the deal done. Or I'll get a better deal, and I can get a lower price. Right. So um, where that's inaccurate is that if they work for the buyer in any way, shape, or form, then they run the risk of losing their license. So they work for the seller, period. The seller hired them to get the most money for the property, period. Even if they 
you know, do that mythical slight reduction in commission that in no way, shape, or form will get the buyer the same kind of deal that they would get if they had strong buyer representation. Okay, very good. You have something to say? I see you standing on your feet there. <laughs> Shake, well, not, I agree. You're that, shaking your head. That's the, uh, the thought is to go directly to, I've heard that, and I don't know why a buyer, especially in the current, as Phil called the pay format we have, if this representative, uh, professional real estate um, advocate will work for you at no cost, then why not take it? All right. Um, so we're we're wrapping, we're wrapping up. up. So Scott, how do we reach you? <coughs> Scott Forcino, uh, Exit Realty Group, nine one four eight seven nine eight four one one. And Melissa, we are so happy that you're here. I wish <laughs> that you had so much more to say. Well, we'll I, have to get you back on. I have plenty to say, but but that'll be for another day. Okay. So. You're on. Thank you very that much. That was my for pleasure. Here. Anthony, how do we reach you? Uh, Anthony Negrelli, 914-548-4345. Where's your new office? Uh, Valhalla. It's uh, 115 East Stevens Avenue, Valhalla, New York. And who are you with? Movement Mortgage. All right. <laughs> and Phil, how do we reach you? Okay. Um, I guess our corporate office, 914-762-2500. Uh, I have an office in Pelham, which is 914-738-2200. And we have an office in Mayapack, which is 845-628-2200. Thank you very much for joining us today, everyone here in the room. Thank you, Melissa, again. I'm going to keep <laughs> saying it because you broke up the man cave for me today. I'm Victoria Rivadonera. I could be reached at victoriariva.com. You can find all my information there. Thank you again for joining us at the Real Estate Revolution. Perfect. 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 Perfect.